Hi everyone, and welcome to this tutorial on how to create a Flask application with the help of ChatGPT. So, as you all might be aware, that ChatGPT uh, or Generative AI has been the talk of the town for the last couple of years. With the advent of Generative AI technology, it has empowered the developers to do more. And today we will see one such example where we can use a generative AI application like ChatGPT to code up a Flask application. So Flask is a library in Python in with, with which you can create very simple web application. So if you are well versed with Python, this is a great opportunity to use uh, a tool like ChatGPT to help build you any application that you want. Here, we will try to build a very simple application. This application takes from users input about their health and try to uh, predict the risk of diabetes type 2. So without further ado, let's look at what ChatGPT looks like. So if you look at ChatGPT, it, has, it is a tool which is interactive in nature. It's a bot or chatbot tool. And in this chatbot framework, you can write a query to ChatGPT or you can give your comments, you can type any text and ChatGPT will respond to that. So in this is called the prompt in which you need to write a query or you write, uh, so we call this a prompt. And here we will try to write our query with which we can leverage ChatGPT to build that application. So I have already written some prompts and as you might be already aware that the output of ChatGPT is as good as your prompt. So the general uh, rule of the thumb here is that you first try to create a simple prompt. You first create a very simple query and then you enhance it by adding more and more details. So I have first written a very simple prompt, which he says, write a Flask application in Python as that takes input from the user about their physical health and uh, predict the BMI, calculate the BMI basically to assess their risk factor for diabetes. So that is the simplest prompt that I have written. And with this, ChatGPT has generated this Python uh, code as well as uh, these two HTML files which will be used to render the results. So in this application, we'll not be, uh, we'll not be using any CSS element. We'll be just using HTML to keep it very simple. So, uh, so what to do? So Flask application uh, needs that the HTML files and uh, to be present in specific folder. So first, what we need to do is that we need to copy this code, this HTML code into our Jupyter notebook or any programming in, uh, environment which supports Python and you have to put this uh, into the HTML files and store it in appropriate folder. So, so what I have done is that I have taken a Jupyter notebook, which is the simplest way to code up Python. So what I have done is that I have first written a uh, uh, way to install Flask. So this peep install Flask, this commands help you to install Flask. And then I have created, so this is a directory that I'm in. So this is called chat GP program. And in this, I created a templates folder. So you can also do it, uh, you know, without the Jupyter Notebook and also go to the folder and create it. So after creating this, I am writing this index.html in this folder, in this templates folder. So this index.html, so what I need to do is that I need to go to chat GPT and copy this file and store it in this index.html. Similarly, I'll store the result.html file. I'll so this command helps you to write this content, this entire content into this result.html file. This is a nice hack in Jupyter Notebook to write it without going and creating the file itself. So once we have done this, so, uh, so if you look at the folder in which uh, it is there, so if you look at, if I look at this chat GPT folder, you can see that this uh, in the inside this template, these two uh, files have been created. And if you see that in this chat GPT uh, program folder, we also have this notebook that we are working on. So now uh, I have to write out the Flask application. So why, where, where will I get this? So the Flask application is available in the chat GPT itself 
So the chat GPT has generated the Flask application to start with, and I have copied this Flask, this entire code, and put it in the in this uh, in this notebook. So once I run this notebook, it uh, it, it uh, spawns the uh, Flask uh, web app, and when I go to this web app, you can see it is taking uh, say you know so I can say uh, 100 kg and weight I can say 1.73 uh, centimeter, and if I calculate it, so this is the BMI. And it is saying that it is high risk of obesity or uh, diabetes. So this is the first application. Now, as I said, that we can also enhance this application. How, how can we enhance this? So next, I asked Chat GPT that hey, uh, so add some additional questionnaire about the health and the lifestyle to evaluate diabetes. Uh, you know the risk of diabetes type because uh, if you understand that diabetes uh, is not only dependent on the factor of, of weights and height, but also in uh, several other factors. So ChatGPT actually updates this application. So uh, we can you know, we can look at this application. So it has added age factor, gender, and everything to assess the risk factor now, right? So uh, so basically that, that we can uh, now we can copy this. So remember that we have to also update our results uh, .html and everything. So uh, I was actually not uh, very happy with this uh, result. So I also added factor like race and eating habits. So these are two factors that I added. So this is the final. So this is what I called as prompt enhancement. So by adding more and more enhanced query, you can actually help to create advanced application. That's what we are doing here. So this is the final output of ChatGPT with the all the input fields that we asked for. So this is the you know it has you can see significantly it has improved the way to you know input and also the uh, also also the factors. So now what we will do is that we will go back to this uh, uh, and we will write this Flask application. Remember we also have to update our uh, our in you know index and result.html. So again like what I will do is that I will say that write file and I will say you know templates and I will write index.html. Uh, and here I will copy the index.html file and in, in another, you know, uh, uh, another like, uh, you know, uh, uh, this Jupyter, uh, this slide, we will we will write uh, the uh, uh, result.html, which will, you know, render the result of uh, our, uh, you know, program. So this is basically what we want to do. So now what we will do is that copy the, you know, so so ChatGPT didn't generate the index and the result or estimate. So I asked it separately to generate it. So this is what the you know uh, updated index or HTML look like. So I'll copy it and I will you know paste it here. Uh, so this will create my index HTML and I have to do the same for the result HTML, right? So I have to create the result HTML uh, and now uh, what I need to do is that I need to uh, stop this. So I will stop this uh, so that you know the server is uh, stopped, and then I will I will run this. So it is uh, overwriting uh, the existing index of HTML and it's overwriting the result of HTML. Now I'll go to Chat GPT and I will uh, copy this entire program that uh, you know the new Flask application, and uh, we will we will try to uh, you know use this in the Flask. So let's replace our Flask application with this new code with the enhanced. Uh, questionnaire that we want to ask the user. So then, now we will remove this debug dot true. So th this debug is only required if you want to debug your program. We don't want it, so we'll just remove it. So you can see that now the Flask application is again running. So we'll go here. You can see that additional inputs are there. So I can you know again uh, you know pro provide all this in, you know uh, so we can say that it is uh, thirty two uh, and then male. Then you know the, uh, you know I can say the moderate. Uh, yes, and then you know I can say that you know Asian and uh, you know eating habits. I can say the average, and if I say calculate, so it said that you know uh, so it gives you the risk factor of type two diabetes. So uh, you know uh, my BMI is like it is coming as thirty three point four one, and you know you can see that you know if for Asian ethnicity it is of lower risk because what happens is that you know so if my age is uh, uh, you know younger than thirty five, then you know it is not a big deal. If I am obese, it's at higher risk. So it is giving you so if the family history of the diabetes like increased risks, right? So if there is uh, because of family history, I have increased risk. So for Asian ethnicity, it is lower because it, Asian has higher blood sugar level. So an average eating habit, right? So the moderate risk. So it gives you the risk uh, at different you know factor level. So this is what we wanted to you know demo. So thanks for attending this tutorial, and hopefully we will see you again in the future.